Good morning and welcome to Business Africa Live on BTA. Benjamin Afre is my name and I am your host. We are talking about something very interesting today. Share nuts and share butter. Maybe you haven't thought of these things, you know, in a while, but they play very, very significant roles, both medicinally and cosmetically, in, in the scheme of things. Today, I want to zoom our lenses on the share butter industry, and we'll be talking to one company that is making strides in this industry. We'll take a short break. When we come back, I'll introduce my guests for this morning to you, and then we'll take our discussions from there. Stay with us. The tourism industry in Ghana is reported to be the fourth highest foreign exchange earner on our GDP list. We will find out what the impact, the identification, development and promotion of tourist sites in the local vicinities where they are located. We also want to talk to the various chiefs and opinion leaders in these communities to assess whether tourism is making a positive or negative impact on the lives of the local people. This is Tourism TV fact-finding program that seeks to investigate the existing and potential tourist sites. Join me, Ralph Aite, this and every Friday on this wonderful expedition to find out what tourism is all about in Ghana. Business Television Africa is your television network that provides you with quality programs, innovation and technology to advance the African dream and the high quality of life. On Business Television Africa, you get to hear the true stories of business people in Africa and in the world. BTA is in French. J'aime regarder Business Television Africa. And English. You can watch Business Television Africa via satellite or on First Digital Box. Looking for a venue for your wedding reception, conferences and retreats, outside catering, recreation? Look no further than Coconut Grove Beach Resort Hotel, located in Elmina. Coconut Grove Hotels, memories worth repeating. Welcome back. So, the share butter, as it is, has both medicinal and cosmetic value and plays very, very important roles, especially in the northern part of this country. There's a company that is making strides in terms of this industry. And I'm very happy this morning to have in our studios Mr. Senor Peli, the CEO of Secav Ghana Limited, to show or to throw some light on their business and the share butter industry as a whole. Thank you for coming, Mr. Senor, and welcome yeah, to Business Television much. Africa. Thank you. I hope you are fine this morning. Yeah, doing very well. Okay. We're just uh, uh, arriving from uh, Abidjan uh, I see. For, uh, for the Global Share Alliance meeting. I see. Yeah. I see. We'll be talking a bit more about that. But for, for starters, tell us a bit about the share butter industry, especially in this country. Okay. I would say in Ghana, uh, the share industry uh, is more developed uh, compared to uh, other regional uh, countries, uh, like Burkina Faso, Mali. I think Ghana is number one. Really? Um, currently, we are exporting uh, around uh, 60,000 uh, tons of she nuts, uh, and um, that uh, gives us a, a value of uh, close to uh, $40 million. So it's a, it's a very important uh, industry. Yeah, and uh, we have a pr processing capacity in Ghana. Um, I would say we even have a over capacity. Over capacity. Yeah, in terms of uh, mechanical uh, processing in Ghana. Yeah. So you've shifted from more of the, the manual processing to mechanical processing. Yeah. Um, or we are still using both. Yeah, in Ghana, um, we have a 
mechanical processing, mm -hmm. uh, but we also have the handcrafted mm. uh, butter, mm. okay. uh, which is an area of, of uh, interest to us uh, as a company, as a social enterprise. Uh, we feel that uh, this important raw material should be processed in such a way that uh, it will be an inclusive uh, mm. uh, uh, processing system. Uh, the mechanical processing just takes the nuts from the community ah. and, and send it out to maybe uh, in the south to process and then export. Oh, okay. And so okay. It's, okay. it's only able to create a part-time job for the women. Mm. So uh, mm. We, mm. we're trying to bring a, a new revolution into the industry okay. where the sheer nuts could be used to create uh, important jobs for rural women. And then uh, we will then take the unrefined butter from uh, these from women, women to further process uh, finished product. And that's what we're doing. So, so you are doing two things at the same time. You're creating employment or sustainable employment for the women involved. Exactly. At the same time, contributing to value addition. You're not just exporting the raw material, but you're adding value to what you are getting from them. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we're talking about the issues in the share industry. Most often, uh, we are crying for higher price mm. for, the, for the share nut. And, and I think uh, that is not the solution. Okay. Uh, the solution is to be able to create permanent job mm -hmm. for, for the rural women. Okay. So that's why uh, we have uh, uh, piloted the centralized processing uh, place. We call the Shea Butter Village. The Shea Butter so Village. we have about uh, six communities that surround our uh, centralized processing place. Mm -hmm. And they all work in about 200 uh, women I see. who come I see. to process Shea Butter. And they process throughout the year. So they are able to generate income throughout the year, and that is a solution. And it's not uh, paying a uh, uh, high price for uh, maybe a woman that collects uh, five bucks in a year. Yeah. I mean, no matter how high the price is, it's never going to So <laughs> you, you are looking at, like I said, you are looking at the more sustainable approach instead of maybe just doing once in a year or five times in a year. You're looking at a regular, continuous process the year throughout. Yeah. And that's what you're doing now. Exactly. So the first industrialization mm -hmm. uh, took the nuts from the women. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, we are uh, uh, bringing up uh, a new uh, way of industrializing this industry where the women are involved in transforming the butter. They add some value before we take the butter from them and then we, we put it into our finished product. So they take, it, they take the nuts, take the butter out. Once that is done, then you take that from them, from that point. Exactly. And then add whatever value you need to add to it before you sell to, to consumers. Exactly. So uh, there has been issue of uh, quality, mm -hmm. that uh, mm -hmm. the, the women are not able to process quality butter. Mm -hmm. So as a company, uh, since 2003, when we started business, uh, we have invested a lot in research. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have come out with a standard, standardized way of harvesting the shear, okay. uh, the, the shear okay. fruit. And we have also developed video to teach the women how, how to, to process the, the butter. So we have helped them to improve the quality. So um, when we take the quality butter from them, we are able to uh, put it into our uh, high-end finished product, the, the Tama brand. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a very interesting uh, you know, the process you're going through because we do a lot of uh, export of the raw material. Almost everything we produce in this country, most of the time, it is the raw material that we send out. But what you are doing now is adding value to those raw material before you send them out if need be. Otherwise, you sell it within the country. Now, how well is Sekav doing in terms of selling these end, end, end products? Okay. So, um, I would say we are doing very well uh, because... Uh, uh, we have recently uh, received uh, investment from uh, Injaro Agricultural Capital Holding uh, because of our success story to okay. uh, uh, produce more of this product. Mm. At the moment, we do not uh, uh, advertise our product, but it's doing very well because uh, we, we want to also uh, encourage uh, Africans mm -hmm. that uh, we have a lot of uh, very uh, nutritious uh, cosmetic oils and ingredients in Africa. And so uh, there's no need to uh, be using uh, artificial uh, uh, products, mm. uh, artificial mm. products like petroleum yeah. Um, yeah. or the paraffins mm. or the hydroquinine. I mean, we, we want to uh, discuss it. a natural, uh, what do you call it, natural cosmetic. There is uh, no need to add 
anything to it, more or less. Exactly. Uh, so the Ghanaian is becoming very sophisticated. And um, uh, Ghanaian is having a lot of appetite for high-quality products. Uh, so uh, even though we encourage uh, made in Ghana goods, uh, we want to say, yes, we want to uh, protect the health mm. of the consumer. We want to give something that really uh, works for the, for the consumer. Um, we want uh, to nourish the skin. <coughs> if you nourish your skin, uh, it will remain beautiful. It's true. Uh, you don't get uh, chemicals to uh, get... Uh, 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 how do you call it? Uh, get a very, uh, like we would say, erosion of, 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 the, the, of, of, the, of the skin. That's true. Yeah, so it, that's, the secret of uh, beauty is uh, a healthy skin. You mentioned yeah. that you recently got some assistance. Uh, in what form? Was it a loan? Was it equity in, that, in, in your company? Yeah, so um, it's equity plus, uh, plus some uh, debt. And what, yeah. what exactly are you using this for? Okay, so we're using uh, our investment first of all to uh, build the human capacity and okay. also to hire to hire more experts okay. uh, we have hired a cosmetic uh, chemist we have uh, hired uh, finance experts um, we have uh, also hired uh, a project uh, expert project managers mm. and we we invest in a, a lot also in our production capacity so we buy in a new equipment uh, that will help us uh, augment the production these share nuts or share butter, share nut trees, do you uh, grow, plant them back or is the old ones that are bearing more fruit? I'm asking because of sustainability. Yeah. How sustainable is this from the point of uh, the raw material point to your side? Okay. Uh, shea is a very interesting uh, plant. Um, its, its gestation period is between uh, 20 to 25 years. Oh yeah. So when you plant a tree, <laughs> plant a tree today, it takes like 25 years. Um, wow. Fortunately, we have a, a dense population mm -hmm. uh, in the northern sector of, of Ghana, and what we're doing is we want to discourage people from cutting it because uh, mm. we have, mm. uh, uh, I would say, uh, some uh, uh, negative elements <laughs> uh, in the in the system yeah. who yeah. want to cut down the shade trees uh, to make a uh, fuel wood uh, also to carve uh, other, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I would say, uh, tools out of the shear tree, maybe mm. uh, for the hope, for uh, maybe a mortar. Mortar and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Person, those things. So as a company, what we have done is to uh, subscribe to international organic certification. Okay. So in all the communities that uh, we are working in, we have to sh prove to a third party that uh, we are responsible mm -hmm. and uh, we are promoting sustainable share. And so in all the communities we are, we are working, uh, there is a, there's a, a bylaw okay. uh, that prevents okay. uh, the indiscriminate uh, felling of, of these, of these uh, trees. trees yeah. And this is audited by uh, EcoCert. Yeah. But, but then when it comes, so w but what I wanted to know was that after the harvesting is done, how do you get the trees to, do you grow them back? I don't, I don't know, you, you don't cut them, but if it takes 20 years, so let's take a tree. It takes 20 years to mature, to bear fruit. How long does one tree take then to come to its cycle? Okay, so the shear tree uh, agronomy, after, after 15, 20, 25 years, begin to bear its uh, uh, fresh, I would say first fruit, okay. and it reaches maturity at the age of 40. Of and 40? Then, yeah, and it can bear fruit for as long as 300 years. I see. Yeah. I see. Quality, quality through us. So in our I community, see. for instance, um, we encourage a natural regeneration. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. uh, we encourage the women not to pick all the shear fruits. Uh, to leave some, yeah, to, leave some to, to germinate. To germinate and yeah. uh, also uh, to manage uh, the parkland uh, where you see maybe four shear trees growing together, competing for nutrients. Uh, you can remove two and leave one, or, or maybe remove a tree and leave a two, two. To, to grow. And yeah. how, how well are they taking this message you are giving them in terms of the regeneration of these plants? Well, I think uh, uh, the, the women are the, almost like the owners of, uh, of the trees. Of the, of, <laughs> of the trees. Yes. And uh, we try to uh, dialogue with them very frequently about the importance of uh, regeneration. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Now, in terms of competition, do you have any stiff competition in, in, in the share industry so that maybe you are putting in some place some 
measures to ensure that you still stay ahead of your competition? Well, I think uh, competition, uh, the success of competition lies uh, in the hands of the consumer, mm. of the finished product. Uh, we are committed to produce uh, world-class quality and packaging um, of a uh, sheer, sheer product of a uh, high concentration of certified organic shea butter. Okay. Uh, we are in the process of uh, uh, certifying our product, so okay. we're going to have okay. a certified organic cosmetics. So we are not the <laughs> we are not singing our own uh, uh, praise, That's but true. a third party uh, of uh, international repute will uh, certify our product as natural. Because our products are natural, I mean, it's, it's welcomed by the consumer. For instance, our shea oil for hair, um, mm. Mm. their customers are calling it uh, hair fertilizer. I see. Yeah, our body lotion uh, is delivering uh, stretch mark repair, is delivering anti-aging effect, and so uh, people wel welcome it. Uh, for instance, we put uh, our uh, shea butter soap in the hotel, mm. and uh, mm. people use it, and they call. Or they go to, they go to the reception and say, hey, I like the soap. I, I mean, most of the receptionists okay. say, we haven't heard this before, that somebody will buff soap. And We've been supplying like we supply soap for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> and then people I buff see. and say, I like your soap, I want, I I want more. I and that's how we, we grow in our So you're market. growing by more of referrals. People exactly. People just referring the Yeah, word of mouth, yeah. I see. Yeah, micro distribution, yeah. What, what are some of the products that you are currently producing from, uh, from your end? Okay. At the moment, uh, we are producing... Uh, Shea butter body lotion. Okay. Um, the body lotion is made up of 15% shea butter, mm -hmm. and in combination with uh, other natural extracts like black tea. Uh, mm -hmm. Black tea is known for prolonging uh, cell tissues, so it's more like an anti-aging cream. Mm -hmm. uh, we have mm -hmm. the uh, the body uh, oil, okay. uh, which is a, a liquid form of the of the butter, mm -hmm. and so it's, it absorbs very quickly and delivers the same benefit. As the natural, which uh, one is the uh, body this, oil? yeah, this is the body oil. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Fast absorbing into the skin, okay. uh, and it's more like a rich oil, rich in nutrients, mm -hmm. and so you are giving a food supplement to the body. Yeah, to the to the body. Okay. I mean, it maintains your color. It doesn't change your color. Mm -hmm. If you are black, <laughs> you will be black. black. <laughs> if you are fair, <laughs> you are fair. fair. Yeah. But if you bleach your skin, for instance, um, shea butter is very uh, good uh, uh, skin repairing or let's mm. say tissue repairing uh, mm. uh, agent. So if you bleach your skin, for instance, it's going to identify it as, uh, as uh, an ailment, and then we'll try, try to and <laughs> repair <this. laughs> try, try and repair it and give you back your, your original color. I see. Yeah, so I see. shea butter doesn't make people black. I mean, but if you bleach, if you use chemical, then definitely. Exactly. We have a special do. soap for uh, people with, uh, uh, people with uh, extremely dry skin. Okay. Soap, ordinary soap, commercial soap, will uh, dry your skin. Uh, but uh, when you use shea butter, shea butter is made up of two important oils. Mm. We have the saponifiable oils mm. as well as the unsaponifiable oils. The unsaponifiable oils remain in the soap, and so the, it conditions your skin even after bathing. Okay. So when you bath shea butter soap, your skin doesn't become dry. And uh, also we have the, the black soap, which mm. is uh, our ordinary uh, alata soap that we have refined okay. and uh, making it uh, gentle. We have introduced 30% shea butter in it uh, because uh, in the north, every medicine works very well I know. <laughs> when mixed with shea butter. With shea butter. Yeah, so I see. black soap is from the south, Alata Samina. But then you've mixed it with. We bring the best from the country, the naturals from the south, the naturals from the north, to make so a, very, a very unique uh, well. uh, soap. I so see. if medicines perform better when mixed with shea butter, mm. uh, you can imagine what the soap will do. Yeah, it takes care of uh, razor bumps, it takes care of uh, uh, pimples, it takes care of uh, foot rot, and it's very effective, yeah. I see. See, that's wonderful. And you're getting, are you getting a lot more clients, especially the hotel clients? Yeah, I mean, that's... As in the various hotels that you're dealing with? Yes. Uh, we are getting a lot more clients, and uh, uh, we're hoping that as our production capacity improves, uh, we will be able to... Uh, reach more more hotels right now uh, our sales for hotel soap uh, surpasses uh, our projection i see yeah i see yeah. currently how many people are you employing um, so talking about employment mm -hmm. um, we have um, 
2,500 women who are collecting the shea nuts. Okay. Uh, we have uh, 200 uh, women who are processing the shea butter. Mm. Uh, these are our indirect uh, jobs yeah. that we are yes. we are creating. That's true. Um, but as a company like Sikaf, we are 30 uh, in number. About 30. Yeah, we so are now employing you're, 13. you're employing close directly and indirectly over 2,000 people. Exactly. Even as a small company. Yes. I see. I mean, that's that's interesting. Yeah, that is the that's impact. Uh, I believe uh, that's where all the jobs are hidden in uh, agro processing. I mean, if we export our raw material, we we just exporting our jobs. Are you we, getting support from from the government in any way? Uh, I would say uh, two years ago we had uh, support from the government in the form of a business development service fund, okay. Um, okay. which assisted us to get uh, to pay for the international certification. Okay. Uh, but uh, okay. This international certification opened the door for us, and uh, we were able to generate enough income to be able to pay our own last year before we even got the investment. So yeah. currently, you are not relying on government uh, for funding in any way. But it's just from your new partners uh, and then what you already had. Yes, yeah. But uh, we we will still uh, explore uh, all the potentials. Uh, Most definitely. Yeah. Most definitely. Let's take a quick break. We'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back. Now, let's talk about how well your company is doing, but in terms of whether you are exporting or importing, uh, whether you're exporting or everything is being used in the country currently, how, how much are you producing, how much of it is going out in terms of export, and how much is retained for use locally? Okay. Uh, in terms of uh, distribution of uh, Tama products, mm -hmm. um, our main market is the local market. Markets. Okay. Uh, when, when we first uh, came out with the, the model, uh, I agree our prices were very high, but okay. uh, we quickly uh, commercialized and uh, changed strategy mm. uh, to make our prices affordable to, to Ghanaians. So the people in Tamale love Tama. <laughs> yeah. Why Tama? Why the name Tama? Tama means uh, sheer fruit. Oh, yeah. I see. <laughs> Tama I means uh, shea fruit. The people, so we are selling to people of Tamale. <laughs> and then we're selling to, uh, we're currently distributing Kumasi. We're distributing also uh, through individuals in Accra. And then we have a key distributor also in, in Accra. Mm. Um, apart from that, uh, we are exporting our products to Jeddah. Uh, that's uh, Saudi, Arabia. Saudi Arabia. We are exporting to Vietnam. I see. Yeah, we are exporting to the USA. Okay. If you go to Amazon, uh, you will see Tama product on uh, Amazon. Um, we are exporting to Burkina Faso. Okay. Um, we just uh, appointed a, a new distributor in uh, Ivory Coast. Uh, I would say just uh, uh, yesterday in the morning. Oh, wonderful. We, con we concluded the, the deal. Discussions with them. Okay. Yeah. And okay. uh, so uh, we want to penetrate more into uh, the regional uh, market and uh, also international market. We are also in East Africa, in, mm. in, in mm. Uh, Nairobi. Kenya. Yeah, Nairobi, Nairobi, Kenya. And then we have a lot of interest mm. coming from Sudan, coming from South Africa, wow. coming from Germany, coming you, from- You probably might not be able to meet <laughs> the demand, uh, you know, at a point. Yeah. Uh, I see. The products see. are natural, and once you use it, you will uh, feel, feel it. Feel the effect. Yeah, you, you feel the, uh, the effect. So currently, are your production able to meet the demand you, you, you are getting? Uh, I wouldn't say our production is able to meet the demand. Uh, we are almost uh, out of stock, yeah, <laughs> most wow. often. And that's why we're quickly uh, uh, trying to put in place um, uh, new machines mm. that will uh, improve our production uh, mm. capacity. So you are yeah. doing both exports and the import? And, and import. So I would say I it's more like 50% uh, 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 
local and then 50% uh, export. Uh, export yeah. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good to know. What are some of the challenges that you face as, as a company, um, especially dealing with local produce, adding value to local produce? What are some of the challenges that you encounter? Well, I mean, as for the challenges, uh, there are a lot. <laughs> there are a lot. I mean, uh, you know the Ghanaian business uh, uh, environment. Um, the main challenge we face, I think, is uh, uh, supply of uh, utilities. Utility. Yeah, power. Mm. Um, mm. Even though in, uh, even though you, you will see uh, electricity in many communities, mm -hmm. it's just for uh, light bulb. I mean, not, not for uh, industry. <laughs> not for uh, Our industry. production. Yeah. Yeah. And then, then you talk about the cost of it. That's true. Um, I, I think uh, selling uh, power to uh, manufacturing companies at a retail price mm. Uh, mm. Is, mm. Is, 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 I mean, like, is a disservice to uh, our, ourselves. I know. Yeah, I think uh, there should be a special price for manufacturing because manufacturing creates a lot of jobs. Yeah, so, uh, and then also if you compare the cost of uh, power now between Ghana and China, you realize that China has it cheaper than us, and so we can never compete, compete effectively directly. with uh, China. I think yeah. there's an argument that has come up before. <laughs> I'm hoping to <clears throat> have uh, some discussion on that mm -hmm. in terms of how or how much you sell power to industries as compared to the consumption, the local consumption. Because yeah. I think it's something that probably the government would have to take a look at. Yeah. If you are producing for powerful to people who are creating jobs and maybe you should look at a, a cheaper source of power to them than but are you considering solar i'm asking because of where you are located you are up north there is abundance of that one is solar a favorable option and two will you consider going forward with with the kind of fluctuation we have with the kind of expenses that the electricity as we have it uh, brings are you considering any of these yeah, I mean, uh, during our, we always meet very f frequently to, dis to discuss uh, sustainable issues. You mean your association? Yeah, no, like, uh, like my company. Oh, the company, yeah. okay. We discuss uh, sustainable uh, issues mm -hmm. affecting our company. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the topics we, we have been discussing more is uh, how to generate our own power from the waste. From the waste. From the waste mm -hmm. from, the, mm -hmm. from the shea butter processing. Yeah, so um, in the future, uh, we hope to come up with a very innovative solution to cut down on the cost of uh, power. Oh, yeah. I see. That's good to know. Now, something <coughs> that is of interest to a lot of exporters, the depreciation of the Ghana city. What impact has it had on your business? Well, I would say um, the depreciation of the Ghana city is good for us uh, in terms of uh, uh, export. Exports. Yeah, it makes our uh, export prices attractive mm. to the international uh, community. Mm. Uh, however, as you are aware, um, to be able to come out with finished products like this, um, we don't have uh, uh, local supplies of certain uh, natural raw material. Ra raw material. And also, uh, we don't have a high quality packaging material mm. suppliers. Mm. And so you have to import this. And so, uh, though a depreciated currency will uh, encourage uh, export, export, but m we import quite a large amount of uh, input from uh, outside. So I this see. kind of uh, destabilizes uh, the benefits. Yeah. So you are gaining on the export side by losing out by on importing. Imp importing uh, yeah. If you look at the, comp the composition, roughly how much of your um, total input are you importing? Yeah. For us, um, I would say... Um, Less than ten percent. Less than ten percent. Yeah, less than less than uh, yeah, uh, ten yeah ten percent. Yeah, because we're using shea, which is raw material from 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 Ghana. Yeah, we're using all natural ingredients from from Ghana. So you mentioned power as a problem. You mentioned to some extent the position of the city. What other challenges do you face in the, in your industry? Yeah, I would say uh, as a company aspiring to do things in the global village, mm -hmm. uh, not just uh, doing things per Ghana standard. Um, we, we, we lack certain human resource. Mm. Yeah, mm. We, la we lack mm. certain uh, speciality. Mm. And so we have to, uh, we, are, we are compelled to import such uh, uh, expertise to be able to uh, make uh, our, uh, to be able to achieve our objectives, yeah. 
Something interesting uh, was a package. You mentioned packaging, but then I looked at your packaging. Can you give me? Yes. And this is packaging that meets an international standard. You know, if uh, it hadn't been the fact that I knew Tama is uh, <laughs> Shabata, there is no way you would think that this sort of thing uh, is made here. Yeah. But these are made here. The, what, what happened in terms of the packaging? No. Uh, the packaging is supplied by our uh, branding consultant okay. uh, from the USA. Ah, yeah, I they, see. they supply the packaging. I mean, uh, we don't make uh, tubes in Ghana. There's no company ma manufacturing tubes. Uh, tubes in Ghana. And I think uh, this is not rocket science. Uh, packaging uh, manufacturing company should be able to uh, produce tubes in Ghana because there is a huge market for it in the regional market. Yeah. No, but what is of interest to me is the fact that you've gone, you've taken that step ahead to package it to this kind of international standard because you can easily compare this to any other of the imported, um, you know, creams that you have. Yeah. You see, also, there is no difference. There is no difference between this and any of the other things I've seen. Yeah, in terms you know, of packaging, there's no difference. But in terms of content, it's a huge Most definitely. Different. This is better <laughs> than what is coming. Most of the... But I'm happy with the fact that you've taken that step mm. in, in ensuring that this will meet international standards. Yeah. Because normally people would just go for anything. But you are going... Is it, is it a, a kind of a branding strategy you are using then? Well, uh, for to, us... To go for the highest in terms of quality. Well, uh, we want to package appropriately. We want to package per the standards. Mm. In the, we have a global standard. We have a ISO standards. Yes. We have the Ghana standard boss standards. Mm. So, um, and these standards protect the interest of the consumer. So um, if you respect the consumer, uh, you mm. will uh, give the consumer something that uh, is safe and uh, healthy and, and uh, useful for the, uh, for the consumer. Why are you not advertising? Because this is the first time I'm hearing about Tama. Yeah. You know, why are you not advertising? Yeah, we are not able to advertise at the moment because uh, our distribution system is a micro distribution system. And also, we don't have the production capacity. We, we may collapse. <laughs> when, when, <laughs> we will be run by the demand. Eh? Exactly. <laughs> we will just, we will just, uh, it will be, to be, to be a bad day for us. Yeah. I see. Yeah. So it's a deliberate strategy you are using. Yeah. Well, if the product sells itself, why do you want to pay <laughs> to advertise? Well, to get a, a bigger chunk of the market because there is competition out there. It is true, you may have created your own niche, but then every company will want to eat as much of the pie as possible. Yes, I agree with you. You know, I agree with you. This is the first time I'm hearing of this. That is why I want to know whether there are even plans ahead to at least a, a couple of, maybe some billboards or some flyers yeah. or something. Yeah. When we received the investment, uh, we actually launched a market research. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, the market research has uh, ended uh, last week. And uh, going back to base now, we're going to study this market research, okay. uh, make a, a few uh, corrections to the packaging in terms of design, um, maybe, maybe even do, do rebranding re, re mm -hmm. of, of mm -hmm. the packaging. Mm -hmm. and, and also, but we hope that uh, our production equipment will have arrived. Okay. And, then, okay. and then we will have a production capacity that we'll have confidence in to be able to uh, meet the demand that will uh, come from uh, Advertisement. Yes. Are you looking to uh, employ more people with the coming of the new machines? Or Absolutely. You need you, the current staff will be enough to handle everything. Um, yeah, we will definitely be employing engineers. Okay. Yeah, process engineers. Okay. We will be employing technicians. Technicians. Yeah, and also we'll be we'll be turning out a large volume of Tama product yeah. uh, that will consume a lot of uh, unrefined butter from the women. Mm. So we'll mm. be employing, we'll be creating more jobs for, for the women in, uh, in Tamale. Tamale. So the, the, the question out, uh, I want you to answer before we go for our next break is, in spite of the challenges you face, what one thing drives you to, look, well, no matter the challenges, we we'll still need to go on. What, what drives you, what drives the company? Okay, I'll say social entrepreneurship mm -hmm. is, is in the DNA of uh, CICAF. Uh, we see issues, mm -hmm. unemployment, mm -hmm. massive unemployment mm -hmm. among, uh, uh, I would say, a group of uh, people 
who have not uh, been to school. Mm. Uh, and then we see a uh, lot of potentials in raw materials that are around them that could be uh, uh, turned around to create jobs for these people. Mm. So for us, uh, creating jobs for the people is very, very important for us. Okay. And uh, we, th we, we want to show the way. We think that the solution to the unemployment in the rural communities is a uh, lack of uh, uh, value addition to their agricultural uh, uh, produce. Let me ask one last question before we go for a break. In, in, you are doing well in terms of turning this around, but then what would make the woman in the village turn to Sekaf instead of a competitor? What, what would make anyone come to you to want to work with you, you know, as a primary uh, producer? Yeah, CCAF uh, guarantees the market. Okay. CCAF uh, teaches the women how to process high quality butter that okay. can improve their negotiation power. CCAF pays premium on the market price to, to the women. And uh, CCAF is a real partner. They see CCAF as a real partner because we discuss the issues together and then we propose solutions and then we go through trial and, and, and error. It's not that uh, we have the solution in hand. We, mm. we do trial mm. and error mm. with the women before we I come to the solution. And uh, CCAF is always thinking about the welfare of the women. CCAF is educating the women about how to uh, manage your business, how to save money, how to uh, change your behavior so you will uh, come out of poverty. So we are, we, are, we are highly uh, appealing to the communities, to the chiefs. We work with the chiefs, we respect the chiefs, we meet with them, and we discuss the issues. Uh, those, the solutions we can provide, we try to provide. Those we cannot, we give advice. So we are like a, a free development uh, uh, consulta consult <laughs> consultation <laughs> partners That's to true. most of the communities we, we work in here. Well, it's wonderful to know that Sekaf is only interested in just making profits and run away with the profits. But seeing to the total development of the person and the community who define themselves in. We'll take our, our final break. Uh, when we come back, we'll wrap up our discussions and then uh, the rest of the program will run. Stay tuned to us. Looking for a venue for your wedding reception? Conferences and retreats, outside catering, recreation, Look no further than Coconut Grove Beach Resort Hotel, located in Elmina. Coconut Grove Hotels, memories worth repeating. viewers it's been a very interesting discussion on the share butter industry you know with Sekaf and Mr. Senor throwing more lights uh, on what they are doing I am particularly happy about the fact that they are not concentrated on just making profits but also empowering our, our women in particular because as uh, Dr. Agri once said if you educate a woman you educate a whole nation uh, I'm happy with what they are doing to ensure that our women up north, especially those involved, can come out of poverty. Looking at the sector you find yourself in, what can we do as a country, as a government, as a people? What can we do to make it more attractive for some people like Sekav and Tama to remain within uh, the industry? Well, um that's a very uh, good question. Um, right now, I would say sheer processing uh, for industrial processing mm -hmm. uh, is very uh, attractive okay. because uh, many of the companies are set up in the free zone. Uh, mm -hmm. But um, mm -hmm. is it attractive to the local handcrafted butter processor? No. Not. So uh, we need to uh, bring companies like uh, CCAF. We are social entrepreneurs. entrepreneurs. So there has to be a lot of social ent entrepreneurs that will uh, help to add value like we're doing for Tama mm -hmm. products. Mm -hmm. uh, because mm. 
We are, we are taking the butter from the women. We create permanent market. That's true. Uh, it's, it's, it becomes very attractive for the women, uh, and then more women want to process and sell butter to, 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 to Sikaf. Yeah. And then also, uh, we want to uh, give uh, concessions mm -hmm. to social enterprises like Sikaf. Mm -hmm. uh, look, mm -hmm. Looking at the, the, the nature of our business, mm -hmm. creating very uh, crucial jobs uh, I think we deserve some concessions mm. Uh, mm. which will uh, encourage uh, uh, more uh, companies to go the SICAF way, the social entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship way. way. So you don't do business just for profit, but uh, you're providing solutions for, for all in the value chain. Are you, are you pushing this agenda? Uh, not currently. You, you come under the Ministry of Trade. Your business yeah. comes under the Ministry of Trade. Uh, are you... Why are you not taking that, the issues up with, with the ministry, for example, to see what they can do to, to help businesses like you, you know, to, to, to stay in business? Well, I think that's, that's something we should be doing. Do you uh, have an association? Yeah. You we have. Well, so in Ghana, we have uh, the Share Network Ghana. How many companies? Um, it's, it's, a, it's a value chain uh, uh, organization okay. Okay. Uh, uh, made up of uh, collectors, Processors, uh, yeah, traders, uh, industry, uh, other uh, big uh, manufacturers, mm. exporters, mm. and and I happen to be um, an executive uh, uh, committee member. And they should be pushing of, for yeah. We for we this. we're pushing uh, uh, several agendas. I see. Uh, for instance, uh, we want government to get us involved uh, in the setting up of a minimum price. Okay. Uh, we're also okay. uh, pushing for uh, legislative uh, uh, changes. Uh, so, Shia tree could be, uh, uh, become an endangered species protected by, uh, by law. Okay. So, it becomes uh, illegal to actually cut down the, the, yeah, the Shia tree. The and uh, we're doing this through the BUSAC fund. It's more oh, like okay. adv advocacy. advocacy. We're using a lot of uh, democratic uh, tools to be able to persuade the uh, uh, government to uh, make changes to policies. Mm. Because we believe that policies are the business plan of a country. That's true. And so, if the policy is not good, uh, it's like a, a bad business plan and nobody is going to succeed. So we want to contribute, uh, we want the government to get us involved in coming out with uh, these uh, policies. And I think we're working uh, quite uh, uh, friendly. Let's talk a little about the, uh, the ex exhibition you had um, just a, a few days ago. Okay. Uh, that was in Cote d'Ivoire. That was in Cote d'Ivoire. That was in Cote d'Ivoire. Yeah. What, what was... The, the, the purpose, one, and what were you able to achieve, the reasons why uh, you were part of that exhibition? Okay. So, SICAF um, has been uh, very, uh, very much involved in uh, uh, promoting a sustainable uh, sh global share business. The exhibition we went to uh, is organized by Global Share Alliance. Okay. Um, and again, I happen to be an executive committee member of the Global Share Alliance, representing uh, Ghana. Ghana. Uh, the Global Share Alliance is, uh, is a world industry uh, association of mm. uh, inter, mm. uh, I would say, interprofessional body okay. uh, made okay. up of uh, okay. members such as The Body Shop, mm -hmm. uh, AAK, Lodes, Hershey, uh, Sikaf is, a, is of course it's a member, member. Yeah. Uh, Ghana Share Network mm. is, is, is a member. Mm. Now, uh, the, the conference we went in, in uh, Abidjan has the team uh, Industry unites. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the industry unites to promote sustainab sustainable industry, industry and then women uh, empowerment. Uh, two important uh, achievements that uh, we, we talk in, in, in Abidjan is the whole world now has agreed on sustainability uh, policies for the, for the share industry. Mm -hmm. uh, we have, um, I happen to be uh, my, my middle name is uh, Sheikh, that's quality, <laughs> Sheikh quality. So we, we, we've also come up with a standard okay. For, okay. for quality to guide trading. So mm. all these uh, um, draft um, uh, proposals were approved at the, at the meeting. And uh, SICAF uh, participated in the meeting. Mm. And um, as usual, uh, Tama product uh, uh, was, was there. Yeah, was was, uh, I would well say, received. well received by the community in Abidjan. And uh, it didn't take us um, much effort to appoint a distributor. I so see. we now have a I distributor see. of Tama products. And uh, many came to our booth 
um, there was a business to business meeting where we shared our experience also with uh, other West African uh, uh, producers mm. um, and we encourage people to do quality if you want to uh, if you want to promote a sustainable share industry, you should come out with quality that products product. that are in high demand. Yeah. I see. In terms of um, this seminar or this exhibition you had, and then trade among ourselves, the West African sub regime and the continent itself, how well is that going? Well, I think uh, uh, ECOWAS is trying to push the agenda to remove uh, barriers, borders. to remove uh, uh, borders, uh, to have uh, one uh, harmonized code for mm -hmm. uh, all uh, trading activities. So if you are in Ghana, you move into Brato Ivory Coast, uh, you don't have to pay duty you because you are, in, you are in the region. You yeah. only pay administrative charges. Mm -hmm. I think this is uh, uh, something we need to do uh, very quickly because uh, mm -hmm. we have uh, close to um, maybe half a billion people see. yeah in in west africa that's yeah, a yeah, that's a yeah. that's a big, yeah, market. big market and uh, we have a, a huge advantage mm. even uh, europe america companies in china they are all eyeing west africa as a very very uh, interesting uh, market mm. that's true uh, the, the major challenge um, we are facing to trade in the region is more about logistics how to move the commodities from, one from, from the Tamale. Uh, last time we were sending Tama product to Abidjan, mm -hmm. we have to move it to Accra, and then we have to uh, uh, coordinate other logistics, even at dawn. To move it from Tamale to Accra, Accra before? Accra to uh, wow. Elubo and then to Abidjan. And we, we paid quite, uh, close to uh, 1,000 uh, Ghana CD to just send uh, a product of value of uh, 4,000 Ghana CD. Wow. Uh, yeah, so transport cost is, <laughs> is very, very discouraging uh, and it's affecting uh, regional trade. Wow. Uh, yeah. What we are thinking is, this is West Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, let's take advantage of our market. Mm -hmm. uh, let's put up more factories. Mm -hmm. let's, let's distribute the finished product within uh, ourselves. ourselves. Why don't we invest in uh, railways? Why don't we invest in uh, uh, mm. uh, highways that will uh, cut across the, the region. I mean, I think it will open the region and then um, it will bring the developments that we are all looking for. So is it is this something that the the association that you are part of also put in, pushing with the various governments? Because if anything, it is they that make the policies. They can uh, make this succeed, if anything. You are doing your part, but are you talking to your governments to ensure that they can contribute more. They can contribute more to the achievement of this. Yes, of course we do. Uh, even as um, as the board member of the Global Share Alliance, we have been engaging ECOWAS. Okay. Yeah, we have been okay. we have been engaging uh, ECOWAS, and so uh, we, we we have to put in more more effort. We have to push. We have to bring in the media. Uh, we have to uh, advocate. Mm. We we have to uh, continue to push. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, reminding uh, policymakers that uh, it's important that uh, we improve logistics because logistics will facilitate uh, trade among uh, the countries in the sub region. Let's come back to Sekaf. Are you looking at some more products? You currently you have uh, this is what a body lotion. Yeah. A body lotion. You have uh, you have soap. There's a share butter soap. Then you have let me see that one. Yeah. This is uh, the black soap. Yeah. Uh, almost antibacterial. You have, you have the, the tamashia oil. Tamashia oil for for body. Oh, this is for the body. Yeah. Okay. You have the tamashia oil for for hair. Okay, for hair and the scalp. Yeah, I believe our next uh, labeling is going to be tama uh, hair fertilizer. I see. <laughs> because because of what uh, your consumers like, yeah, are yeah, yeah. calling they, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've forgotten the name. We just we want the tama fer fertilizer. Hair fertilizer. <laughs> And there's a hand cream. There's a, there's a hand cream. So yeah. this can be used in the hotels as well. Yeah, it can be used. It can be used anywhere. I yeah. see. So our idea is to sell, is to sell uh, solutions. Mm. Yeah, we are selling solution. Uh, we are selling solution for dry skin. Mm. We are selling solution for uh, hair and scalp problems. Mm -hmm. We are selling solution for uh, anti for wrinkle uh, 
uh, rough skins. Mm. Um, mm. And we have solutions in, in the future we are going to bring. We have solutions for, for the lips, yeah. Uh, lip, like yeah, lip balm. Yeah. Uh, we have a solution for stretch mark, I see. which is going to come. I see. Uh, we have a see. solution for natural, like 100% natural soap for, and very gentle for, for babies. Uh, we, we, we have solution, we have, we just sell solution. Uh, most of our products are used in the spa, mm, mm. yeah, in the country and, and outside. So Tama products are like a spa product you, ca you can do yourself at home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You have a complete product for your own spa at home. Yeah, yeah exactly. I yeah, see. Exactly, I see. Yeah. But then, so it seems that you're not just concentrating on what you're doing currently, but you're looking at the future. Does it mean that you're investing also in research and development? Yeah, we invest hugely in uh, research and development, just like in a uh, international um, cosmetic or manufacturing company mm. in Europe, in uh, America, in China. Uh, research is key. If, if you don't research, you can't come out with the right product. Mm. Yeah, so we, we dedicate um, part of our sales uh, revenue budget to research and uh, development. Yeah. We have done a lot so of research. We have standardized uh, uh, the harvesting of shear. Mm. Uh, today, the whole world has recommended Sikaf's method of processing. Wonderful. For the region. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Uh, and also, uh, we standardize uh, the handcrafted butter processing. And we do, a, we do a lot of research. We have our own uh, laboratory. And uh, even with the investment, we are improving the uh, capacity of our laboratory. So research, That's if you want to do business, you, you have to do business. It, we live in a global village mm -hmm. and you have to do it like the competition is doing. Yeah. You have to ascribe to the best. Exactly. Oh, it's wonderful to know that you are not just remaining in your comfort zone, but you're also venturing out. You are, you are doing things to ensure that you, you are sustainable over, over the long period. Absolutely. Um, I don't know if there is anything that can be done, especially for the women who are into the handcraft uh, one, because I've seen the kind of labor that goes into it. Yeah. And I'm wondering whether they're possibly looking at some help uh, as well in that direction for them. Yeah. Uh, currently, we are testing a, a needle. Oh, OK. Yeah. We are, we are testing a needle. The issue of the women is because they were processing individually in their homes. Uh, well, Cost of production is yeah, high. Yeah. We have centralized yeah. them. So okay. they can buy inputs at uh, uh, bulk prices and, and make more profit. Um, there were issues of quality. Mm -hmm. We have mm -hmm. come up through our research uh, and development program. We've mm -hmm. come up with a standardized way where they reduce uh, material input. Uh, for example, processing shear kernels now. In the past, you will need about uh, 50 kilograms of water or 50 liters of, of water. water to boil like 100 kilogram of uh, uh, shear fruit. I see. Now I see. we are saying that use just uh, three liters mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and to produce steam to, to, oh, to, okay. to, to generate okay. the heat and the energy needed to parboil the nut. So you even cut down on the inputs exactly. as well? Uh, the women used to parboil the, the nut you, so they need a lot of uh, foil wood mm -hmm. because they will parboil mm -hmm. for like the whole day. Yeah. And uh, when you do that you actually cook the, the nut That's true. and and uh, for a very short time your peroxide value uh, which which is a measure for rancidity mm -hmm. goes mm -hmm. very high and so we through our research and development we, we said well it is better to do it 40 to 45 minutes in in that case you will uh, you just need to uh, introduce some uh, heat to deactivate the activities of uh, enzymes that uh, degrade the value of or let's say the quality of the shear nut, like, uh, li like lipases. Mm -hmm. You just need to deactivate mm -hmm. them for some time. Uh, you don't need to cook it The whole completely. day. So 45 minutes, imagine amount of fuel wood you need to it's boil true. for 45 and minutes and then the whole the thing they use. Reduce the material uh, use. And we are st every day thinking about how to do it better and better and better. So the That's whole wonderful. industry That's looks wonderful. up to Sika for That's quality, for, for solution for, for quality. It's yes. wonderful and I'm hoping that you keep uh, the vision up, you keep uh, what you're doing up. Do you have any last words 
uh, for you. Before that, where do we get uh, Tama to buy any of your products? Yeah, so you can get Tama products um, in uh, most uh, hotels in Tamale, okay. at the Tamale airport, okay. uh, while Gecko in Accra yeah. distribute our product, yeah. okay. uh, Felicia and Sans in Kumasi, mm. Poku Trading in uh, mm. Kumasi, mm. and um, uh, just ask your friend. Because <laughs> we do a lot of micro distribution. So you just ask your friend, what's in your bag? Are you selling Tama? You never know. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> you know. Most of our distributors you carry, uh, the ladies carry the Tama product in their bag. I and uh, because they have used it and they like it, they want to sell. <laughs> so they are distributing. Maybe your friend is distributing Tama. You never, and then you, you never know, yeah. Wonderful. I've had a very good uh, discussion. I've really enjoyed it. You know, most importantly, the fact that Environmental sustainability is, is a key thing for SICAF. It's very important. You know, all that they are doing, they all these research and development to ensure that you can cut down how much firewood you use in cooking uh, or in parboiling the kennels. And, and, and like I said, the fact that they're creating employment and, and taking people out of poverty is very important. Social entrepreneurship is key to SICAF. I'm grateful to you for coming today, for throwing light on the share butter industry, on what you're doing and what the future looks like. Uh, we can only wish you well. I'm hoping that the next time we'll have you, Sekav and your products would have grown bigger. Thank you. You know, thank <laughs> you, And Sayu. then also uh, Business uh, Television yes, Africa. Yes, 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 um, yes, yes, yes. I think, I think you are doing a, a good job uh, by uh, uh, encouraging um, uh, business in uh, Africa. Uh, and, and especially in, in Ghana, I think um, if we have a television, the, the media uh, encouraging uh, businesses like SICA, I think uh, we will achieve our No, I promise yeah. you we will we'll, we'll do more. <laughs> we probably might come to the north one of these days to pick your whole production process because we want to see that when you talk about quality, you, don't, you are not just saying it, but yeah. you are doing it in terms of your, your production as well. Exactly. We are happy any time to help you, you know, in whatever way that, that is possible uh, with us. And so we want to give you that assurance that, uh, you know, we are there. We are there for you. Maybe you should be considering listing on the stock exchange to raise some more funds, you know. Think about that. Five years' time, we'll do that. Well, we'll talk then. Yes. But I'm sure we'll talk even before the five years' time. Exactly. I'm grateful. So, you, I'm grateful for coming to our show yeah. this morning. Thank so you. So, we've been talking to Senyo Peli, the CEO of Secaf uh, Ghana Limited. They are share butter people, you know. And today, they've thrown light on what is happening in the industry. What they are doing themselves, not just to make profit, but to bring employment to the people up north. Not just that, but also to ensure that there is environmental sustainability and what they do. I'm happy for what I've learned today, and I'm hoping that you would have learned something as well. And when you go out there, look out for their products. They call it Tama. Look out for that. Thank you. Thank you, viewers, for being with us this morning. It's always a pleasure to come your way. Hopefully, you see us tomorrow morning. I've been your host on Business Africa Live, Benjamin Afre. Have a blessed day, and see you tomorrow.